All right, my friends, how are you all doing? Welcome back to the channel, and finally, welcome back to our Planet Zoo, City Zoo, Build Tropical Wings Zoo. So my friends, I know we've had a bit of an extended break on the channel from pretty much all uploads, not just Planet Zoo, but if you've not seen last episode, I will link it above for you right now. You can go and check that one out before jumping in to today's episode. Now for the last two weeks, I believe it is, I have been working on a huge project where Tropical Wings is concerned, and today I can finally reveal it to you. For people that are on the Discord, they've been getting very light updates uh, on a daily basis on the work that I've been trying to do. The last week's been pretty manic in my personal life, so I haven't really been able to get too much done. But um, thank the Lord, basically, what I was able to get a lot done before this week kind of uh, rolled around. Um, I'm not going to hold off any longer. There really, really isn't any need. We're just going to jump in and we're going to take a really, really good look at the newest part of Tropical Wing Zoo. It's the Primates of Africa exhibit. And so here we are my friends, we are obviously at the entrance of Tropical Wings Zoo. I love to start every episode here, um, it's just kind of like the way I like to, 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 to play it out basically so that I don't reveal everything to you straight away and from the off. Now um, what I am going to say is that the build is very much complete, uh, I've still got a few little details to do though. I still need to finish off some of the uh, some of the education boards and the posters and things that I'm going to be placing inside the exhibit. They take a long, long time and I, and basically it kind of got to the point yesterday where I was just like, look, I really want to showcase this on Sunday so that I can push forward basically next week. Um, so um, I also want to talk to you today about um, a few issues that I've had with the build as well. There was a point where I was kind of thrown off for a whole evening where I was trying to place in um, one of the habitat sort of perimeters and it wouldn't let me and the game kept crashing. So I've had a few issues. So we're going to talk about that as well because there's a few things I might need to change. Um, and at the end of today's episode, I'm going to be talking about my plans for the next one. Um, and the reason for that is because since uh, the last upload, we have had the Africa Pack DLC. And so before we jump into today's episode, I want to give a massive shout out uh, to the guys over at Frontier and the and the devs that create uh, Planet Zoo because they've obviously recognised the good work I hope that I do here on YouTube and they sent me a wonderful sort of care package. Uh, Dahlia uh, in particular I think she deserves a massive shout out. She was the person who got in touch with me on Twitter. Uh, obviously it's up on the screen for you all to see but uh, yeah it was fantastic. I obviously got the Africa Pack DLC uh, as a result of this but also and I think this is probably even better than the DLC itself. They're actually, um, they're actually uh, sort of uh, it, it, at Chester Zoo, um, they've basically sort of rescued a meerkat uh, in my name, basically. And uh, our names, uh, for those that obviously got this care package, are going to be on a, on a on a plaque there. Uh, and so as a result, myself, Emily, Katie, we're going to visit Chester Zoo uh, in the summer when Katie's on uh, holidays. So uh, we're really, really looking forward to it. I've always wanted to go to Chester Zoo. It's meant to be the best zoo in the country, one of the best zoos in the world. So, um, you know, I will obviously post pictures as and when we do that. But my friends, let's not hold off any further. Let's jump in. Let's take a good look at what we've been up to. So uh, we're going to move on in from the entrance, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to take this nice and slow. Uh, so I'm going to look at the exhibit uh, first, then I'll tell you about the problems that we had after we've looked at the exhibit, and then I'll talk about next episode. And we'll, we'll do it in that order. So as you can obviously see here, there's been some evolution here at uh, at uh, Tropical Wings. Now I'm going to I'm going to just take you up so you can kind of see that there is now a building here. Uh, and it actually goes all the way around. And this 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 was not the plan. Okay, the way that the way that this looks, uh, it was not the plan. You will remember. I don't know if it was last episode or the episode before that. I'd obviously shared with you my plans for basically doing a gorilla habitat. I uh, was going to call it Gorilla Kingdom, and the pygmy hippos were going to sort of be part of that habitat. Um, that has completely changed. We are now doing the primates of Africa, and this exhibit now houses gorillas, mandrel, and the chimpanzee. And the mandrel and the gorilla I've done in such a clever way that you can actually see both animals at the same time in different places. Tried to do it with the chimpanzees as well, but it just got way too complicated because of the way that you have to play place around um, uh, the perimeters for the habitats, uh, but I still think the chimpanzees, if the first chimp 
chimpanzee habitat I've ever done, I think the chimpanzees have actually come out Un unbelievable as well. Uh, there are a few little things that need to be done, but what I'm going to do from here, I'm going to zoom out so that you can see the actual scale of what we're going to be looking at today. And this is going to be a pretty long episode as a result. So as you can see, all of this here is the primates of Africa habitat. It might look really grand in, in scale at the moment, but I actually think I've done a pretty good job to condense it as much as I have. I think it's big enough so that the animals obviously get the best care with the zoo, but I've kept it small enough so that it doesn't impact this city zoo as a result. We have got very limited space uh, where the zoo is concerned, and so I was very conscious of that. But we, I've, I've managed to kind of do this in a way that uh, I, I think suits the animals, but also suits the zoo. So just to kind of, so you know what we're going to be looking at today, uh, I'm gonna, I'll give you a quick uh, sort of overview of each part of, uh, of it, and then we will jump in and take a good look. I'm obviously going to take a really good look at every part of it, but we'll probably do a walk through the building first. Uh, so I can show you that, uh, talk to you about sort of my, my plans to finish it off because you are going to see there's spaces here, here, there's space over here. Very much unfinished, but my reason for not finishing it is because um, I'm obviously going to be building other things and I didn't want to start them now. And so I've just left it, but I would explain what I'm going to do with those spaces. Um, and uh, and then obviously I want to talk to you about a few issues that we've had and all. But uh, so first and foremost, this here is sort of like the entrance building, uh, this part here. And it's a big introduction to the gorillas. You've got a gorilla viewing area here. And this is the gorilla yard, basically, uh, here. You obviously go through this building. It's very much an experience. You walk through the whole building and you get taken to different rooms. Um, so as you walk through, you come to this room. Uh, and this is going to be sort of like a, a conservation room and a history of basically the reason behind Tropical Wings building this facility. And then you carry on walking through. This building here is, I'm losing loosely calling this the rainforest room but it's not very like overgrown or anything it's very open so that guests can see the animals and whatnot um you carry on walking through and then here there is actually a mandrel sort of a viewing area the mandrels have got three areas that they can go to uh, and we'll obviously take a look at that in uh, a lot more detail you carry on walking this way this is an indoor chimpanzee climbing frame area which i'm really really happy with uh, and i hope you guys are going to be as well and then this is the chimpanzee's yard on the outside uh, the mandrel's yard is actually sandwiched here uh, and uh, here, basically, but the mandrels have access to the rainforest room, as do the gorillas. So, my friends, uh, without further ado, we're going to jump in. This bit here is obviously just back lot stuff. That's basically the holding pens for the evening. That's where staff facilities and stuff are. I'm going to throw it out there now. That's the bit that really isn't finished. Uh, the, the main nuts and bolts are in place, but there's lots of little details that I need to do. But as I've said to you during the course of this series, we're going to do all of the guest facing stuff first with the high amounts of detail and then that stuff that's back lot that we don't see all the time I'll go back when the zoo's virtually finished and I'll finish it all off properly but uh, yeah let's take a dive in my friends so you will remember the, this is where the little playground is the primates of Africa entrance is just the other side of the playground so it's actually right near the beginning of the zoo you've got your flamingos over here you can walk this way and you can take part and the great thing about this is you're going to enter here, but you exit near the, uh, near the entrance to Adventure Africa, which we're going to talk about more in the end of today's episode. So you go up this very grand staircase now. Um, I've left this spot here open because I want to make like a custom statue if I can. You're going to see that I've created a custom logo for this, um, for this exhibit. And so I want to make that custom logo basically in the game, a bit like I did the Tropical Wings one. Uh, and then I'm going to place it there with the Primates of Africa. But I don't want it to be like really huge i want it to be like pretty small we're just going to place it there on like a nice little concrete block and then i'll put the plants in and finish it off a bit more um but that's why i've left this little spot here uh open so obviously we've got disabled access we've got the stairs it's all a goody good good um you've got your main entrance here but this is like a little emergency exit so basically you know if you need to quickly jump out or if you've basically if you go in the other end and you do it the wrong way round you might want to exit there before having to go to the gorilla uh viewing area 
I hope you like the way the building looks, the design of the building. This changed a lot. It was all flat roof. Then I obviously put a few peaks on it. It started to bring it to life. Uh, this bit at the top, I've not decorated anything inside, but it's actually like, um, the way I've done that is it's almost like a little plant room uh, where sort of like the mechanics and the zookeepers can go look at cameras and the animals and that sort of stuff. That's kind of how I see it. Um, I'll just take you around the side so you can see. Look, we've got a little railing uh, on the outside. It's all overhung. Uh, I need to make some custom doors it's actually like a lot smaller than your usual doorway but uh, you'll see sort of like um, the way I've done it um, and I'll just show you so you would walk around this way and there will be a door here as well just got to make a custom door basically it's the only reason it hasn't been done uh, and you can see like all of the walkways I've really tried to do the roof design like really unique as well and uh, just kind of bring all of that to life so Let's go inside, my friends, and this is what you are met with when you first enter the Primates of Africa exhibit. Uh, obviously, we've got a little direction sign. I think we needed one because there's so much going on in this building. You'll see you've got the gorillas, rainforest around the mandal, the chimpanzee, history of the Primates of Africa facility, and the gift shop. Uh, the gift shop's not built. Uh, that's going to be an episode on itself because I'm going to couple that with a restaurant because I'd said ages ago didn't I that I think a restaurant at the end of this would probably be the perfect place for it so we'll talk about that uh, later on I did uh, I did want to put a statue here but I put the gorilla statue in and it was uh, higher than the, the roof is even though this roof is four meters I didn't realize that 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 statue was so large uh, so I, I didn't bother in the end I've just put plants in I actually think it brings the, the room to life a little bit we're going to go this way shortly but first uh, we are going to go this way and just take a look at the gorillas. Um, so the first thing you're met with, obviously, is get to know the Tropical Wings family, the gorilla troop. And these are the four gorillas that we have at Tropical Wings uh, thus far. And I've created a little story for each one of them. Uh, so we will just take a quick look at that. So uh, Daldi is our male. He's 21. Uh, Daldi arrives at Tropical Wings as part of the same rescue uh, efforts that help fellow troop member Oom, and Oom is this lovely lady at the end. Um, Naya, uh, Naya is named after a former headkeeper who hand reared as a result of her rejection, uh, has her mother's rejection, and she comes from another zoo. This one I think people are going to like if they watch The Lady Designer, and I hope The Lady doesn't mind me using one of her zoo's names, but I know she did a fantastic uh, a gorilla habitat in this particular zoo. So uh, Adelika, she's our youngest gorilla, uh, and uh, this lovely lady is donated to us uh, by the fine people at Malin Zoo, which was a wonderful project that the lady uh, had done uh, some time ago now, but do, do go and check it out. And I just thought it was a nice little touch, actually. And I think I'm going to do that a lot. I know there's lots of creators that obviously I look up to um, and, uh, and, you know, I watch their their stuff, as uh, you know, a lot. So I'm going to, you know, use their zoos um, in the series uh, as it goes on. Now, as you turn this corner, this is the big gorilla viewing area. This is the main one. There are a couple of others where you can look at the gorillas, but this is the main viewing area. Um, this is this piece of land here that this viewing area sits on is raised up a lot higher uh, than the rest of uh, the facility and uh, I've done this for good reasons because this is going to be a borderline vista point because you're going to be able to look out onto big parts of, uh, of the zoo and you're especially going to be able to look out onto the pygmy hippo habitat. Now I've not made the pygmy hippo, hippo habitat a big part of uh, the gorilla sort of kingdom, I guess, if you still want to call it that, like I had originally planned. Some of it was logistics, but the other part was I was starting to worry about how I was going to fit all the animals in. And I just thought if I could fit three species in one big facility and we could have them interact and you could see them all from different points of view, I just thought it made more sense than just doing the hippos and the gorillas but I can still fit the hippos in and I'll show you exactly how I'm going to do it as well once we've uh, once we've taken a look at uh, of this at this big facility so yeah this is the main this is the main viewing area as you can see like it's I, I, it's very grand it it I, I personally I think it looks better on the inside than it does the outside it's a bit cleaner on the inside it's very difficult to get the roof design to kind of work when you're using semicircles and stuff but I, I think we've pulled it off all right and I do think it looks pretty good um but yeah a little bit of seat in here but basically the majority of it is uh you know just kind of like having a little uh look around I do want to put another little uh sign here about 
noise and stuff like that because I do think it's important. That obviously, we respect the animals and whatnot. But uh, I've obviously got this on pause at the moment. You know, at the end, I will obviously be giving you a little showcase, uh, you know, uh, so that you can see all of the animals in action and whatnot. But for now, I'm just doing it in pause because, believe it or not, there's, there's lots of pieces. This is a big build and... My computer's not really lagging, but it's just easier to do it on pause because it just moves along and it's just a bit a bit cleaner. But as you can see, a couple of the gorillas here uh, enjoying the uh, yard. The great thing about this is that um, I've, built, I've, I've, I've built every single viewing area in such a way that you don't see the others that much. Like you can see, obviously, there's windows there, but you can't really see. You're not really going to be able to see the people because of the distance and whatnot. And that's a big thing that zoos try to avoid is obviously seeing people the other side of the exhibit. You can get away with it with some stuff. I think smaller stuff like uh, meerkat habitats and, and things like that, you, you often see people uh, the other side. Um, it's got a name. And for the life of me, I can't remember uh, exactly what they call that. But uh, I've, I've, bit, I've really tried to be strategic as possible. Uh, you'll see like some uh, some trees just poking out there. That's actually the uh, that's actually the uh, the the mandrel part of the mandrel's exhibit. So uh, you kind of get a little view because they do climb up the tree and stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, and uh, yeah, if we just swing around, you'll see this is where the education is. So obviously we've got these uh, these learn at tropical wing signs. Every habitat's going to have one of these because um, it's a kind of like a running theme. That the zoo is obviously going to going to run with. But also I'm doing like custom stuff as well. Um, and this one is a size comparison of the great apes. And I just thought this was a really cool little thing that we could place in here. Um, it's a little janky, gonna be honest with you. I, I rushed the silhouettes because um, I, I drew the silhouettes myself, uh, but I did rush them a little bit so you can see there's a few little bits and bobs that are, are not quite there, but there's loads of little information and whatnot. Um, I, I, on the Discord, I've actually started a new a, a new channel on there where people can share their billboards, and what I'm gonna do with this one, if people would like, is I'll remove the Tropical Wings logo, and then I'll just upload this one on there for you, and then you can use this if you want. Um, this actually counts as an education board um, so if I was to click on it for instance this actually counts as a as you override the texture uh, and you just do gorilla so it actually counts as education rather than just being something that's nice to look at um, so that's that my friends uh, so yeah that's the first little viewing area uh, that you can see uh, and I'm going to take you obviously on a little run around the facility as if you were a guest uh, first and then we'll deep dive into all of the habitats and whatnot uh, next so let's carry on, my friends, as we take a little uh, we take a little journey down this way. Now, this next room, this is going to be the room that kind of talks about the history of the reasons why Tropical Wings decided to build this facility. Now, a few of the information boards in this room are not done yet. Uh, apologies for that, but um, I basically weren't sure how I was going to draw them up because basically what I want to do is try to draw like blueprints and then have information about how the zoo went about building the habitat. Um, but obviously that takes time and a lot of the other stuff came together quite naturally, but these are going to take a bit of time. But they're going to be on these three screens here. Uh, and that is what we're going to do. And then obviously I've got pictures of kind of like the finished habitat just above, uh, you know, obviously a couple of bad gorillas and then a good look at the gorilla yard. Uh, but we're going to be putting them uh, along along this. And this is going to be the room where we kind of do all the history and uh, the dedication. But if you swing around this way, there's another place to kind of sit and look at the gorillas. Now, um, I've obviously had to disguise what was a pretty ugly gap between the wall and uh, and the floor in here. So the guests will just st kind of stand here and look out the window. It might seem far away, but what I've done is I've put these like cushions on here so that maybe if the kids or the adults wanted to jump up and uh, take a look at the gorillas, maybe even enjoy their lunch while they looked out on the gorilla yard, they can do that basically. And that's why I've done this. A uh, bit of planting in the middle. And then we've got some fun facts basically. We've got a smaller version of the, of the uh, education board uh, around the other side, but then we've got like a gorilla's facts one as well, which we were doing with the... Um, flamingos and i've decided to carry on uh, the same theme uh, and so we've got a little gorilla facts one over here as well uh, a bit different in here um to the other side I've, I've kind of put some glass in the roof because uh, there's not many opportunities to actually throw some windows in and, and, and flood the rooms with light in, where this building was concerned so i've had to be really like strategic about the way i've done it but uh, again i'll take you over to the windows so as i was saying it's really hard to see that viewing area over here because of how we've kind of built the areas up um 
again, you know, if you look from this window as well, you're definitely not going to see it from guest perspective, and you can't see the others either. What I personally love about this viewing area is that you can see the city buildings in the background, and that's the big thing where this zoo is concerned. You want those sight lines because this is going to be sort of uh, this zoo is nestled in the hustle and bustle of uh, of a big city, basically. Uh, as you can see, the gorillas enjoying the yard and it's the first real look for you guys of the climbing structure that i've built for the gorillas as well but we'll go over that in a bit more detail um as in a moment but uh you you uh you are now about to carry on your journey around um i've obviously got this year i want to place some sort of exhibits but i've got to build maybe some, some personal stuff uh, i was going to place the uh skeleton of uh that, that's on the, the workshop but that's that was more closely related to the orangutan so i didn't think it made much sense to put it in here um but yeah i'm gonna try and uh sort some stuff out so we can have some like little exhibits here or maybe even i, I might try and build like a small mini model of the of the habitat basically because this is obviously a history of the reason why we built this facility for the animals uh, i've got some more you know light natural light flood in the room here uh, if we carry on this way and this is essentially where the rainforest room begins now uh, and this is gonna this is a really clever room this is a really really clever room because not only do you get to look at the gorillas uh, from another perspective another couple of viewing areas but you can also watch the mandrels walk on by as they make their way into the um into the rainforest room and then further on to another part of their outdoor habitat facility basically and you can watch them uh, uh walk along here i'm gonna put a sign here saying look up at the you know for the mandrels um again like i'm saying those 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 signs they just take so they do take a lot of time and i just didn't get around to finishing them all off um if we carry on around this way, ladies and gentlemen, this is another sort of area where you can look at the gorillas. Again, another little fun fact on the on the wall where the gorillas are concerned. Um, obviously, we want to keep the guests sort of um, you know interested. And again, look, this is another great viewing area. You actually see three of the gorillas here. Um, you can see their climbing frame a lot more, um, and it even says it on here. Do you, do, do you see the gorillas climbing? So even your little education boards are, you know, having a, having a nod at uh, the things that you can see. Um, but yeah, it's just a, a much better view of uh, the gorillas yard and uh, some of the climbing structures that they've got. Now, if we swing around and we carry on going this way, then you get a really good view of that walkover that the... Uh, that the man rules have got. I have just realised it's blue, so I'm I need to recolor that. Uh, and the wall behind as well is a, is an odd odd colour. I don't know what's happened now. I thought I'd done that. Maybe I hadn't. There's a few little details that I've missed. Um, and then we go down this way, and uh, you're going to enter the rainforest room in the moment. But what I've done here is uh, I've put these custom sort of boards here, and I'm going to do an area there that's dedicated to uh, dest destruction of habitat, basically the reasons why um, you know gorillas are critically endangered. The reasons why the mandrels are vulnerable and uh, the efforts that humans could do to basically uh, combat that and i'm going to do it across these uh these three boards here and then i've got this wall here that i'm going to put like a big uh thing on as well uh so there's just a little area basically that people uh can can look at and that's dedicated to um basically people needing to be better to make sure the survival of these animals uh isn't hindered basically and that's uh that's my my reason for that little corner there so if we carry on and we go this way this is the rainforest room okay this is and i'm loosely calling it the rainforest room because it's not um it's not a big indoor rainforest facility like we made in jammy conservation park for instance it's a relatively small room but it's just Obviously, the climate's controlled, uh, you know, the, the, the temperatures, the humidity, all that stuff, it's controlled. So it feels a bit more like home for the animals. And then obviously, we just built it up. We put some light planting in, uh, dusted down the bottoms. And it's just an indoor facility, basically, where the animals can come and they can chill out. Now, the way this has been built uh, is that down here, you will see the gorillas can enter at the bottom and they can enjoy the bottom part of the rainforest room. But there's actually a door at the top right there and that's where this walkthrough goes to and that door at the top means that the mandrels can enjoy the top level of the habitat and they also can then go to their exit point there so i'll show you exactly sort of how it works for the mandrels as you can see look they come through this door and then they can enjoy this entire top section 
of the habitat. It's actually separated by water. There's like a little pond there, and then we've obviously got this waterfall that runs down. Um, but they've got sleeping areas here, uh, should they wish to, and then they can go outside. And this little exit point here goes out to one of their outdoor habitats. That's basically how it works, and it's really clever. Uh, there's been a few occasions where the where I've had one or two gorillas at the bottom. We've watched mandrels walk past. It, it does work. Uh, it works an absolute treat as well. And uh, it took a bit of trial and error to get it to do it, but um, but yeah, it really does work, and it's and it is pretty good. Uh, you know, if I just show you, obviously the gorilla walk through, uh, it comes in from the outdoor habitat there. This is the, the path. Unfortunately, the one thing I really dislike about the paths when you raise them up is that this horrible structure that you get underneath. If anyone's out there that does the modding can get rid of that, oh my God, I would absolutely love you because it's just so ugly. And I tried to disguise it with plaster, but then it lowers this too low that the gorillas don't use it. So I've just kind of had to leave it bare uh, the way it is. Also, this is like a little room. This is like a little room that uh, zookeepers can come in uh, and check on the gorillas as they come through. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a button on the wall and it's how the gates get opened and whatnot. So there's a, there's a gate. This gate here is the one that opens and closes the door, basically. Basically, and there's another gate at the bottom obviously so we can close this room off if we ever need to um, but yeah the doors unfortunately are a bit larger than I would like but it's just the way the game works obviously we've got a fake door over here as well this is where our zookeepers can come in but uh, yeah, I obviously will show you all of this room in full effect so you can see all of the waterfall moving and whatnot at the end. Um, but uh, for now, we've, you know, I'll do the cinematics like I always do at the end. But for now, just, just to make life easier, we'll do it this way. But yeah, that's the, that's the rainforest room. There is actually some windows above uh, here and obviously the windows there. Um, so yeah, lots of natural light flooding in, but as you can see, loads of lighting on the ceiling as well. Now, if we swing around in this little part of the room, obviously lots of signage on the wall. We've obviously got another one of those gorilla signs. Uh, this one here, the primates of Africa, uh, just a little nod to say, please respect the animals, you know, try to remain quiet and all that sort of stuff. I think these sorts of signs go a long, long way. Also, if I can, I'll try and zoom in on this a bit more. Um, this is the primates of Africa uh, little logo that I made so this little sort of monkey head uh, I actually want to put on the outside um, I want to make a bigger version of that that's what I want to build as the statue and then just have primates of Africa small uh, on the concrete potentially written across it and I think it will do a really nice job um, outside uh, uh, of that if you come over this way we've got a mandrel uh, fun fact because if you look through these windows uh, for whatever reason, that's moved in, and that shouldn't have done that. But anyway, if you look through these windows, you can actually see the mandrel enclosure. Uh, well, part of the mandrel enclosure. Um, you can actually see some of them chilling out there. Uh, and if you come over here, you can see the mandrels as well. So yeah, it's just another little way to basically see the mandrel. And also, what's great about this is you get a look at the gorilla yard as well. The thing about the gorilla yard is it's higher. It's actually, the majority of that yard is set higher than the mandrels. Um, there's a piece of water that separates the two. So the mandrels can't get there and the gorillas can't get here. Um, but you can't really see that body of water um, for good reasons because you want to disguise as much as possible in the zoos you want to make it look as natural as possible uh, and I think we've we've definitely achieved that and you'll, you'll see it from a much better perspective in a minute as we leave the rainforest room so if we come around this way a bit of seat in here uh, I was just trying something a bit different um, I've actually where all the seats are where all these seats are there are actually um, proper seats sunk in and hidden in them basically so the guests can use these uh, should they wish so a bit of seat in now we come to the mandrel. Uh, this is another viewing area for the mandrels. Obviously, some directional stuff. Now, I'm going to be putting up here the mandrel family, but I have not got around to doing it um, for obvious reasons, run out of time. Um, but I will be doing that. Obviously, um, gorillas are called troops. M groups of mandrels are called hordes. So we'll obviously put the mandrel horde, uh, and then we'll put them on, uh, on these. But I'm going to do them slightly differently because where the mandrel is smaller, they don't need big... Um, I don't need sort of bigger pictures like the gorillas do. And plus there's going to be a lot more mandrel than there are gorilla as well. So it's the reason why I've done this one a little bit different. But yeah, this is the mandrel viewing area. So like I was saying about that body of water, you can't see that body of water here because it's so it's been disguised so nice with the rocks, the way we've done it. Um, there is a little waterfall. So there is like some water that runs off. Um, 
Obviously the plant has been done, you can see the gorilla climbing structure at the back, but you can also see how that gradient to the terrain uh, ends up moving upwards. You get actually get very good views of the gorillas walking to and from as well, so you can be watching the mandrel, but you can also watch a gorilla walk past as well. Um, there's lots of climbing structures here, lots of climbing frames and whatnot. This is actually how the mandrel get inside, uh, and they go into that walkthrough over to the rainforest room and then onto the other part of their paddock. Um, there is obviously a door and stuff on that. It can be closed off whenever we need it to be. The, there is a small matter of the mandals could actually jump on here in real life. And I need to come up with a plan um, at some point to basically uh, combat that. For now, I don't really know the best action. Uh, I've been having a little read about ways that the zoos go about it, but I don't think any of them work. So I just need to have uh, a little think. But yeah, as you can see, the mandrels are enjoying exhibit. They're all on exhibit. They're all in here for a change. They they spend a lot more time actually over in the other one, which is a surprise because the zookeeper can actually the only mandrel thing that the zookeeper can actually um, can actually walk about in is this one um, because of the nature of the build. There's just certain parts that zookeepers can't get to. It is one of those things, but the animals don't spend as much time in those rooms so they're not going to get as dirty so there's not that much of a problem and you know I, i've tried to be really strategic about where i've put the toys where i've put the food because that's how you get the animals to use the climbing frames there has to be a reason for the animals to use the climbing frames in this game if you didn't know that um if you're going to be making climbing frames that go from one place to the other make sure that you locate toys and food in both even if your uh, zookeepers can't locate and uh, and 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 get there basically now you do get a bit of an ugly view of uh, of some railings and stuff at the top but guess shouldn't be looking up in my opinion, they should just be looking at what's going on in front of them uh, and on the climbing frame. So uh, I think we can get away with that uh, a little bit. Um, this is their indoor area there. And as you can see, that's access that the uh, that the uh, zookeeper has. And then, uh, yeah, we'll swing around this way. And we're about to now go up to the chimpanzee. So if we carry on walking this way, um, this is a staff access door. I'm going to talk to you about how the staff actually access uh, all of the habitats and how they access the backstage stuff. Uh, we'll do that once I've uh, taken you to look at the chimpanzee. But it's really clever because we've actually got one access point here, but I'm going to add a second access point at a later date. Not been added yet because I couldn't build all of the back lot area because I'm not sure where other exhibits are basically going to sit yet. So I didn't want to start filling in space uh, when I didn't know where other animals were going to go. And then this here is an, another emergency exit. Um, I've not done this in the past when I've done big builds like this, but emergency exits are really important. And so I have added one on. Um, so we've got this little point here where you can, where you can, uh, you know, move on out. And when we go round outside, you'll be able to take a good look at how this will, how this will work. But uh, yeah, if we carry on this way, this room here is the chimpanzee's indoor climbing area. And I've done this so that guests can get a really nice up close and personal, uh, you know, uh, look at the chimpanzees, basically. So uh, it's raised here so you can actually get that whole eye to eye sort of contact with them. But what I've done with their indoor thing is I've just done a massive sort of indoor climbing frame uh, for them. Um, I have actually... Um, I actually used just Goran's climbing frame for the indoors and just changed it slightly. So this was something that was on the workshop. I've taken that and then just manipulated it. So um, I'm not going to take all the credit. It's an amazing, it's an amazing structure uh, that, that uh, just Goran. Uh, if you've not ever watched uh, any of uh, any of their stuff, make sure you go take a look because it produces unbelievable content. Um, and yeah, just kind of manipulated the stuff they've done. Again, one of those quiet signs. Nice little place to sit. Um, and chill out and watch the chimpanzees or jump around inside um, but yeah if I just take you in here you, you'll see like lots of bed and whatnot uh, and just climbing frames everywhere that do go all the way to the ceilings um, we've got all the lighting another one of those fake doors obviously so that zookeepers have got access uh, to this room I do need to paint this wall here um, I just forgot about that one we could probably just paint that white to be fair um, and then, yeah, you've got all of this that they can enjoy, basically. And it's just a little indoor room. Uh, if the weather's ever bad and you wanted to lock them indoors and all this sort of stuff, you can do. Um, the door for the chimpanzees has to be bigger than that of the gorillas. Now, I don't know, but that don't make sense to me. Um, 
the chimpanzee doors are so grossly big that they offend me. Look, it's as big as a as the human door, and that's that's based off the door size that they actually walk through. So yeah, it's just a bit strange to me. And then that goes off to the outdoor exhibit, basically uh, there, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, just a really really cool room that our chimpanzees can enjoy uh, whenever they so wish. If we carry on this way, we're now going to go into the part that's the outdoor chimpanzee exhibit. Now, this look is going to look really plain to the rest of the building, and the good reason for that is I haven't finished it. And I've not finished it because at the end of it is where I'm going to place a small um, Primates of Africa gift shop and then the uh, adjoining restaurant uh, that I want to put there. And the thing with the restaurant is I want to be really clever because I want to do a big glass wall that looks out onto the chimpanzees, basically. Um, and so as a result, I've not finished this area because I, I still need to work out the logistics of that restaurant and gift shop, basically. But uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of a step up. So as we step out, this is the chimpanzees. Now, you're going to be able to walk all the way around and you're going to be able to view the chimpanzees all around this area. We are going to put sort of like some stuff on the wall, introducing you to the chimpanzee family. I've already put some screens in place for education and whatnot. But uh, yeah, if I swing you around, whoops, if I swing you around, this is the chimpanzees, basically. This is their uh, outdoor habitat and this is their outdoor exhibit. Now, I've done the whole moat thing. Um, because zoos do this, it's a very easy way to kind of contain the animals on exhibit, but it still looked natural. I've started to build up a bit of a rock wall at the back. My reason for that, obviously, is as I've spoken about, we are going to be putting in that restaurant and the gift shop. And so I wanted to build up this wall um, because it, so that it'd make a bit more sense uh, and start getting that uh, built up. This is Castle Chimpanzee, uh, is kind of what I'm calling this structure. It is monstrous it's so there's so much to it there's so much going on um again it's it, it was but part of it is a structure like literally i'd say about a quarter of it was a structure that i found on the on the workshop to try and save some time and but then I, I extended on it so much that the part that i used you can barely see now uh i just went crazy basically with the chimpanzees because why not why the hell not, my friends? But uh, we will take a look in a moment. But uh, yeah, this is the chimpanzees. And if you walk around this way, my friends, you get a really, really good view of uh, of the habitat. Now, this is obviously the back of the sort of climbing frame, the indoor area. And I put the windows in just to flood that building with natural light. There is another window there as well. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at all this stuff in a bit more detail. But uh, yeah, you carry on walking around. And as you can see, it kind of meets this point. You're going to get to this point uh, at the back here, and then that's it, really. That's all. That's how you're going to look at the chimpanzees. Um, but there's a huge climbing structure that I've put in, and it also joins up to their overnight stuff as well their, uh, that they go into uh, at the end of the day. Uh, but yeah, absolutely in love with it. And then, yeah, as I was explaining, we get to this point here, and it, it goes a bit dead. There's nothing going on back here. Um, and the reason for this is there's going to be a door here which is obviously going to be the exit, but there's also going to be like a door here, and you're going to be able to take that door, and there's going to be a small gift shop, uh, but then you're going to be able to, like on the side, but there's going to be a, a, it's almost like a corridor that's going to walk this way, and then there's going to be an entrance to the restaurant, and I'm going to do a restaurant here with a nice big sort of like glass window on the side so you can look in and we'll also do like another door to the restaurant like here so that if you haven't been to the primates of africa you can still access it and go inside basically and that's the way i'm going to finish that off um and it's going to finish this bit off i think it'll finish this area off uh, over here um and then we'll probably just sort of add maybe a smaller exhibit or something over here or or I'll just plant it up. And then this is Adventure Africa, which we are actually going to venture into next. And I'm going to talk to you about uh, in a moment. But yeah, that's that's basically how the guests would enjoy the primates of Africa, my friends. But let me let me show you uh, the actual animals habitats now um, and the way they look, because um, it's one thing to look at, you know, it from a person's point of view. But then you get to look at how I've built it and you kind of uh I actually think you'll probably throw a bit of respect on what an unbelievable effort it is to achieve what we've achieved um, and to get all these animals in the same area and it all working like and it and it works where I have very little escapes like I've had a couple with the mandrels and I think it's just because of their little walkover um, which actually I should show you 
I can show you that in a minute. We don't need to look at that from a people point of view. We can do both bits at the same time. But this is the Gorilla Yard. Now, the Gorilla Yard is large. Um, it's probably about a quarter of a size bigger than it needs to be. But my reason for that is we have to think about the troop expanding. You always, you always have to think about your family of animals expanding. They're going to have young, and then you're going to have those uh, gorillas on exhibit as well. Same can be said for the chimpanzees and the mandrel. You've always got to think about having the space. Uh, of the three species that we've built, the mandrel are the ones that are probably going to run out of space first so i'm going to have to control their numbers a bit more than the others but um i i, I still think we can get away with it um I think for realistic purposes, these habitats are probably the size they need to be. Um, and for that reason, I might turn off overcrowding. It's a setting that you can actually do now. And I might turn off overcrowding so that it doesn't matter. So the numbers can go a little bit crazy with the mandrels. Then they potentially could, with the with this size of the uh, exhibit issues, we might run into. Um, but yeah, the gorilla yard first. Obviously, this is that viewing area. This is that other one, and then these are those two little cubby holes. That's the doorway into the rainforest room. Um, Daddy, our silverback, does not look happy at the moment, does he? Jesus, he looks very, very moody, doesn't he, right now? But, uh, yeah, as you can see, look, if you're looking at it as well, you can see the way the terrain levels really change. I was so conscious of this because one criticism people have of a lot of the stuff I build is that I either build sunken habitats or I build a habitat where the terrain is just a bit too flat. And the other thing I get criticised about a lot as well is not putting long grass in because I prefer the look of the shorter grass. But I gotta be honest with you, you guys are right. That long grass does set things off. It really, really does. It makes things feel a lot more natural as well. Um, so yeah, as you can see, like the terrain differences are there for everyone to see um the terrain does work its way up here so we've got these almost like these two mounds one either side and that's where i built the climbing structure so that it would go from one side to the other and then we've got the forage pit in the middle with more climbing here um and then i just went really natural just throwing loads of logs around big logs as well because obviously the gorillas are a bigger animal and just putting them in really strategic places i've put all of these rocks in uh places now obviously i know these gorillas could probably climb up on these rocks and then potentially get across here but um the game says they can't um and because this is water the gorillas probably wouldn't bother um bother you know trying to cross because of the water the same here because we put this trough in um the gorillas are not going to try and get across and again this is that clever water trough that i was talking about where you can separate the two habitats but because then the, the way you plant and you rock the edges up it disguises it in a way that you can't see it obviously we know there's a little waterfall there and when you're standing here you will get the spray from the waterfall but um you still can't see really that there's that body of water that does separate uh the two species which is pretty cool but yeah that's the that's the gorilla yard, um, and I really hope you like it. I, I'm in love with it. I actually think this is... Uh, um, I, it's funny because the last gorilla habitat I built was that in Highland Zoo, and as much as I love that gorilla habitat, I look at this one and you can see just how far your your build style has evolved and stuff as well. So it's nice. Uh, it's nice from that point of view. Uh, you're going to see this over here. So that, that's an issue. We'll talk about that. Uh, uh, at some point uh, we'll take a look at this um, mandrel yard uh, so you can see this one uh, on the outside so this is obviously a lot smaller this yard um, but plenty of climbing structures all kind of built a bit differently because they are a smaller animal uh, and then we've got this little climbing frame that does go up into that little walkthrough now this is the bit I was talking about that's a bit of an issue so those mandrel definitely have the ability uh, to jump that gap or just kind of cling on to this and get around. And then they would be away. They would be able to walk all the way around here and potentially they'd find a way to drop into the gorilla habitat. So um, I do need to find a way to kind of combat this. Uh, and there's no point putting sort of struts in or anything like that because, again, they're, they're, they're a monkey. They can grip on. they got hands like us they would be able to grab on and they'd be able to climb it and stuff so there needs to be a really clever way of doing it and i'm not sure what it is yet but um they don't actually bother they can't actually get here they honestly the only time they go up here is to go through so i'm not too concerned but obviously when we're building for realism i do need to think of something to put there um as you can see like the roof design is crazy on this building uh, and we'll, i'll go through all that in a bit more detail uh, in a bit uh, that's the little gate to their indoor area. So that's that's part of um, their outdoor 
habitat and i really like it actually i think with the view, little viewing area here and here i think it's a lovely little uh lovely little habitat to look at i'll just take you over and i'll show you their other one as well because obviously i didn't show you this in the first part of the tour but uh this is that walkthrough from the rainforest ass and again i've got a similar issue to what i've got over there so i know that the mandrel in real life would climb here and they'd be able to jump on there and walk along and then they'd potentially be able to get on the roof and they'd be able to escape basically so that is an issue i need to find a way of uh of of, of combating that as well i need to find a way of putting something here so we would stop the mandrel from basically jumping on top but um this is their little walkthrough and uh from this angle here oh it looks amazing absolutely like if, from here this is as you're about to turn the corner so for me I, I think this view is one of the best views in the zoo now i really really do i absolutely love it uh so this says you're about to turn the corner and then you watch the the mandrels kind of walk across uh, and then yeah this is their other this is their other outdoor area as you can see we've got a don't feed the animals ah one of them's over here that's nice to see one of them over here you've got your education and whatnot nice little bit of seating um and it's, it's done in a similar way to the flamingos to be honest with you but uh, obviously the only difference is uh, is a lot of climbing stuff there's a couple of um a little cubby holes here as well where they can actually access this so there's just a couple of little sleeping areas basically it's a smaller one just in case there's any issues uh you can actually separate the uh you could actually separate the 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 the, the, the monkeys if you needed to because the door there closes so if you wanted to you could always have a man or over here uh, or two if you needed to separate at any point uh, and then just stop the others from accessing um it's all done with all this stuff in mind but yeah they do actually they can actually get through them gaps and they can come in here and have a little sleep and a little chill out and obviously this is like another sort of access for zookeepers in here um little door there um, I need to build some sort of like button stuff so that it opens all the doors up and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's just another little area basically and you go out here and then it's, look where you are. You're in that backstage area, ladies and gents. So, uh, so yeah, it's all been built nice. The issue, by the way, is this fence here glitches the game out and it crashes. So, um, my, my way around this, what I'm thinking of doing is I might take a piece of fence to here like a different piece of fence i'm going to build it out of something that's not a climbable material because what i've realized is because it's wood it's climbable material it makes and it causes issues so i might build a different type fence here and then put a gate here um for staff access only but i might extend this out to here and then this can be another in and out point basically so you've obviously got this one here but the guests could actually walk through and exit this way i think it's the makes the most sense and i can see this wall this brick wall design i can just do a brick wall uh over here uh this side it will look nice with the plants behind um and we'll just put like anti-climb stuff on the top of that wall so they can't get over into exhibit. But I think it's the only way around it because I've had to remove that fence. As you can see, it's over here. Because every time I try and put it back, it glitches the game out. Uh, it's not great. It's, it's, a, it's a pain. The thing that's annoying the most about it is this fence here doesn't glitch anything out. This fence here doesn't glitch anything out. But this small section here throws the game into disarray it's a nightmare um another little thing is this uh, this is that access point that's to the uh lower stage of the gorillas and this is where you go up your ladder uh we've got some fencing in um but yeah the staff can walk around here a uh, little gate for the staff to go through um but yeah this is all this is uh that room basically so if i take you through you'll you'll know what i'm talking about this is that bit basically so yeah we've got that room there there's a few of these um we walk around this way do you like the design of the outside as well we've got these three shades of they're actually green they're actually three shades of green you wouldn't know it because uh uh the top two don't look green at all do they look more sort of a, a sort of a brownie beigey color um but uh yeah all really like dense with the foliage just decorating it up all really really nice uh, but yeah, you walk around this way. This is that emergency exit point that I was showing you. But again, where we've done all the planting, like really nice and strategic. Um, you kind of hide all of this stuff. Go around here. Another little staff access point. So if I was to take you through here, and you go this way, and you go here, and you go through this door, you're in the rainforest room. See? Oh, that is that. 
upstairs for thinking, downstairs for dancing, ladies and gentlemen. I've thought of everything, basically, where this build's concerned. I really, really have. Uh, even putting little details, like a little ladder on the wall. Uh, but yeah, you go in here, and that's, that's where you're at, basically. This is more... Staff can go in this way, but we don't want good guests. This is exit only. I need to do a sign for above. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, no entry. This is uh, an emergency exit only, but our staff can go through that way. Um, and then, uh, yeah, this is sort of like the man draw. We've obviously got a fake door here uh, for our staff to get on. Um, but what's nice as well is over here, you can sit here and you will actually see the monkeys all jumping around. And so like, you can actually see a man draw from here. So there's... There's loads of viewpoints, basically. It's just loads of stuff that our guests are going to see, even if they're not at that exhibit watching. Uh, you know, we've got the same with the flamingos, haven't we? So it's just really nice the way it's all come together. And then we'll take a quick look, a deeper look at the at the chimpanzees. So this was the bit I was talking about. This is that wall that I've built up at the back and we've really heavily planted it. Um, that's the access to their overnight stuff. Um, that's the access to the indoor sort of uh, jumping area, climbing area. Um, this is Castle Chimpanzee, basically naming it after Castle Byers from Stranger Things. Um, but uh, yeah, you've got this lovely big sort of like tree in the middle, similar to what we did with the gorillas. Uh, and then I built all the climbing frame around it, basically, all of these, uh, all the ropes. And it just it looks a bit crazier, but I just found that chimpanzees, from what I was looking at, the chimpanzee climbing frames were just a lot more mental than that of a gorilla. Chimpanzees climb more than gorillas do. Gorillas only really climb to forage. They're not really, you know, they don't really, uh, you know, climb all that much. Don't really sleep in trees either. So um, especially the bigger sort of species of gorilla like we've got here at the zoo. So um so yeah, that's that's that basically. And then, like I was saying, I'm going to put that restaurant here, and then I'm just going to build sort of a. Then I might actually take this water in a bit here. It's very wide because they could jump it. They can't jump that because of the way this is all built. But they could jump this. So once we've got all that restaurant in, I'll finish all this off uh, back here, uh, and then we'll get all the backstage in. So. Let me explain to you how that works. Um, I am conscious that we're getting on for nearly an hour already. And, um, you know, I've, I've still got to talk to you about next episode. And I've got to give you your little cinematics at the end. So, yeah, I'm really worried about it. The roof um, is not finished. Um, I'm st I am slowly doing it. But the way the roof design works for this facility, because it's such a big facility and there's there would be so much stuff that needed maintaining, we've got um, we've got an entry point here. Uh, which is obviously behind this gate. This is like a little staff area only. So we've got this entry point here. And what this one does is you can service uh, this so they can actually get here, get up to clean the windows and all that sort of stuff. Uh, could actually access this if they needed to. But then this really just services this part of the building. So we've got a few solar panels and a few bits and bobs. We've obviously got this plant room, not decorated the inside, no need to. Uh, but we've got this little, little plant room here. Apologies if you can hear Emily. She's probably just woken up from a nap. Um, so yeah, you can see all of this here. Uh, then we have this little bit here. Um, now what this is, is I'm, I'm basically, this is like a yard. This is gonna be like a staff yard, um, this part. Now this this just came about, um, I, I, I thought about doing a seating area here. I thought it might be a nice place for people to stop and have a little sit down. But then I thought, it just seems a bit overkill because when they finish, they're gonna come to a restaurant or if they go here, there's a seating area there with a bathroom. I just thought it was real overkill to just be putting something else in. And they would be so busy enjoying ha the habitat anyway, uh, then the exhibit i don't think they would bother so i turn this into like a staff yard so what this is is just like a central point that joins up our guests part of the uh of the uh exhibit and the behind the scenes stuff which is where all the staff facilities are which is where all of the sleeping dens and all that stuff is for all of the animals now this part is actually the bit that needs the most work um i still need to do the yard i still i'd still need to put a few bits and bobs i've, I've started putting some stuff in but a bit of the yard is there's another access point so these steps uh, obviously come in that you can get onto the roof of the rainforest room but also you come around this way and this is where the majority of the ventilation the air control units the vents and all that you basically access from this point so you come up here and this is on the outside of the rainforest room basically this is that other side of that window um uh, I've put railings in and stuff for safety purposes. I've done it a bit differently to what I've, to anything I've done before. I've done it for a reason. I, I just wanted to bring the roof to life because it was just a, a, a black mess, basically. It was just where it's such a dark, 
um, roof. It just looked very plain and it just looked boring. And so I wanted to start bringing it to life. So I've done that by adding all these vents in. We've got these walkways so you can actually access the other side. So this is all the, the overnight stuff. Uh, and then if you come around this way as well, there's another one up this way. But obviously I need to add the, the, the little bit of pathing in because uh, that you would want your staff to kind of follow a path rather than walking all over the roof because these are where it would have been reinforced basically uh, to allow all that sort of stuff yeah so you come this way and come up and then there's another way to kind of like look after the events and I've tried to do my best where wherever there's a, an entry point for event um, I have then put proper vents in the ceilings and I've tried my best my my absolute best to try to make sure that it actually makes sense because this is a realistic build and I am going to make this available eventually on the workshop the whole zoo so that you guys can take a look and these are the little things that people appreciate and they're going to they're going to enjoy the big bit of the solar panel in is over here but uh, but yeah, let me take you through into the sort of into that area. So this all makes a bit more sense. So as you can see, we're back here. Um, this is the staff access point only. So we go through this way. This is that yard. If you go this way, then this takes you into the uh, evening holding uh, areas. Basically, now one mistake I made is when I made the holding uh, areas, I forgot to put windows on. Windows are actually essential because zookeepers would look through windows and. You, that's the best way to see if an animal's escaped because animals can and these animals are dangerous at the end of the day they're very large animals and have the ability to you know hurt basically the zookeepers so they've got to be careful but the first thing they're met with is a dedicated kitchen area to these animals and to the facility it made the most sense to do this because it's such a big facility and um there's a lots of animals basically to look after so i think it made sense to do this now if you was to go uh, right, that's the chimpanzees and it will take you to the back of the facility. But if you go left and you come around this way, this is where you access the gorillas and the mandrels. So the gorillas have got two access points. You've got this one here. Now what I've done in each one is I've done this design where you would filter animals through and then you come here. And this is where the zookeepers can work with the animals. Especially the older animals that might need medication, that sort of stuff. You've got these dedicated areas where then the zookeepers can give them their meds. They can interact with them and this sort of stuff. Uh, but then if you walk around this way, this is where the bigger sort of holding area is in the evening. Now, as you can see, it's, it's, it's decorated to a point, but I've not finished it off. Uh, I need to put bedding in. I need to put raised areas in and that sort of stuff. But it's not, not completely finished. Uh, but we come around this way and uh, that's the door onto the gorilla habitat that way. And then this way is uh, a second door and you come out here. This is the mandrel. Okay, so this is where the mandrel are. We've got this little hallway. And eventually I will add loads of like cupboards and all that sort of stuff, loads of storage and things like that. But yeah, if you come this way, then this is the mandrel. Now, as you can see, the mandrel, I've already put the window in because I got round to doing it. But uh, this is the mandrel onto exhibit. That's the door that goes onto exhibit. But these are the holding areas, basically, for the mandrels in the evening. With the mandrels, uh, what we would do is we would... Uh, put them enter them into this area close both doors and this is where you would do the meds and all this sort of stuff but these are actually two sleeping areas obviously both got their doors uh, individual doors if there were a lot of animals you will find that some zoos would uh, filter enough animals into one close that door and then the others would go in the other area just to kind of separate them to stop him fighting and that sort of stuff uh, and as you can see like i've done even more detail in here started to get vents in uh the windows in the ceiling in this one because it was difficult to get light into this room uh but again like a bit more detail um that's the behind the scenes that way so if we go back on ourselves I'm going to go past the kitchen now. We obviously need signs and stuff on the walls back here uh, for these. But if you go through this one, this is the chimpanzees. This is where they are. Um, I'm still working on this. This, again, this is the area where you would be giving your chimpanzees uh, your meds and you're doing your work with them and stuff. Um, I need to put the door in, but there will be so there would be like a door there, basically. That is the door to go out onto exhibit. That door there is to go off into there. Absolutely thought of everything, and I, ladies and gents. Uh, go this way, door to access, um, but you go around here, and this is basically where the chimps would sleep of a night, basically. Uh, a bit smaller than the gorillas. Uh, it probably needed to be a bit bigger, to be honest with you. It probably needed to be a similar size, but um, I was starting to worry about how much space we were starting to take up. And then you walk around this way, you come around here, and uh, that's the kitchen there, but then you come this way, 
uh, and this is exit basically that's the way you move out window there that's kind of uh, at the top and then you would exit out and this will be another backstage area basically but at the moment nothing's been done because we don't know what animals are going to back onto it um i do know that i want to put another um i want to put another point up here similar to what we've got here I want, do want to put another point here. So there will uh, eventually there'll be a gate to that point because obviously there's going to be path that's going to pass through. There'll be a gate, but it'll be like a crossover point. So there'll be a gate, gate, and then there'll be like a, an access here, um, basically. So yeah, that that is pretty much it. There's not, there really isn't too much more I can show you, but that's that is the primates of Africa. Ladies and gents, I hope you like it. Uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed building it. It's taken way too long. <laughs> I'm going to just throw that out. It took way too long, but I've enjoyed building it. And uh, now we're going to talk about where we're going to pick this up next time. So obviously I gave you guys a plan about what we were going to do we were going to build this and then we were well it was just going to be gorillas at, at first and we were going to build pygmy hippos we had otters in mind we had all these things that we were going to do but um i will explain to you what's going to happen with the pygmy hippos so the, what's going to happen is uh this is all very much unfinished all of this here but for, for for good reason so this path is now going to drop down a level we're actually going to drop this down now this here is just one body of water but we're going to have a, a couple of waterfalls that are going to fall down into another body of water and that's going to be um a, a lower than that basically and then that body of water there that pieces that's even lower that's going to be where the pygmy hippos are and there's going to be viewing areas to look at, at the pygmy hippos but the great thing about these viewing areas is you're gonna see the gorilla yard in the background and i think this is important because it still ticks those boxes of the gorillas and the pygmies being able to be seen at the same time um Yes, in a very different way. They're not going to be as up close and personal, but I just think it's really cool that you're going to be able to see those animals in the background, basically. So I am still going to be doing the pygmy hippos uh, in this area. We just need to drop that land down a bit, though, uh, and then we can finish off all of the water. Um, uh, I've already started putting vents in, but yeah, we're just going to drop down with a few strategically placed sort of waterfalls, basically. They're going to fall into a big hippo pool, and we're going to build it up as well. So there's an area where they've got a, a little mud, uh, a little mud plot, uh, and things like that. And then we're going to drop the path down further, uh, so that there's going to be a glass underwater viewing area uh, eventually. We're, and we're going to do a building and all this sort of stuff. The otters are still going to go over here, but it's a work in progress. Like it's going to take a long time to get the otters sorted because I'm really confused by what I'm going to do with the otters. I tried to do the otters before I did this, but it was just proving really taxing and just a, a real mental strain because i couldn't get it to work the way i wanted it to so i'm actually going to be putting the otters off for a little while because i'm going to work on africa i want to finish off adventure africa before i do the rest of the the zoo uh in this direction we're going to be doing a coastal we're going to be doing a rivers a river and coast area so you're going to have the flamingos you're going to have um the otters but then it's going to move in and then you're going to have an indoor area that's going to have you know some of the reptilians so we're going to have the 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 gharial we're going to have the caiman uh in in inside there potentially the terrapins as well and then you're going to go outside there's going to be the uh, a polar point which is going to have the emperor penguins and the um and the polar bear uh we'll, we're going to have the other uh species of penguin as well the smaller species but we're going to do a big area for them and it's going to have like a little area where people can look and they're going to have talk show a, a talk and stuff on them and then we're going to do a big seal exhibit as well it's all going to make sense and it's going to finish then with this big building that's going to be like a um it's going to be like a fake aquarium basically i mean what i'm going to do is just build it uh so it's like a facade and then at a later date if we potentially get more aquatic stuff we'll jump inside and finish it off that's what's going to go over there basically um so yeah i'm doing doing like a rivers and co sort of coastal thing over there um pygmies are going to go here otters are still going there we're going to move this way we are going to get a restaurant and a gift shop in but what i'm going to do for next episode is we're going to start adventure africa and we're going to start over here now obviously we got the africa pack dlc and i don't want to be one of those people who gets the pack and uh, spends all my time working on animals that it doesn't involve and so i've been trying to think of an idea where i could involve a few of the animals basically so we're going to do another multi-animal exhibit 
they're going to have their own spaces but they're all going to be in this uh they're all going to uh, kind of go to this central hub um we're going to do a building in the middle so that people can go inside and have a look from a different perspective and then we'll do like a bit on the back which is where the staff access only but basically in this area here which is where sort of adventure africa is going to start we're going to do the meerkats the fennec fox and the aardvark and we're going to do them all in this area basically they're all going to have an outdoor area an indoor area um and uh the the meerkats i want to try and do it so that the back of their habitat looks as though they access a, they access it through like their little logs and stuff and it looks more like it's all built up in like a cave um, and things like that the fennec fox might do in a similar way and then the aardvark uh in their indoor area i want to try to build their indoor area so it is like an underground den i want to try and do it in a in a clever way uh if i can uh, to make it look that way um, because they are more of a nocturnal animal anyway so yeah that's what we're going to be doing next episode i'm going to be working on those three animals um, because i think i i actually prefer building multi-animal exhibits rather than just one animal at a time uh, and i think if we can do it where you know they're, they're, they're free they're free smaller species so you can fit them in a in, a, in an area like this uh, and I just think it's a nice way to start Adventure Africa as well. I really do. I think it's just a, a really fun way to start Adventure Africa. A central building with uh, with all those outdoor exhibits. Uh, you'll be able to kind of have a real good look around and walk around it. And then you'll move through and then it will start with the bigger African species, basically. It's kind of how I'm looking at it. Um, the more and more I look at this area over here, the more I think that the elephants are probably going to be over in this area because I'm looking at the size of this and then I'm thinking about the size of a, an, ele an elephant yard. It's going to have to be quite large, isn't it? So I think the elephants are going to end up being over, over here, basically. We've still got all this zoo, but I am still conscious at the same time I've taken up all this room. So... Uh, I reckon we'll end up purchasing this at a later date, don't you? But yeah, that's what we'll do next episode. And we might as well, I might throw in that restaurant and the gift shop if I get round to it, gang. But um, I am done and dusted. I, I am. I, I have no nothing more to talk to you about. So I, I guess, really now, we just sign out and you get a look at the wonderful cinematics. And so there you have it, my friends. We are done and dusted for another episode of Tropical Wings. Um, what an episode, eh? What a build. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed it, and I really hope it was worth the wait. I know, obviously, it's been two weeks, two and a half weeks since the last episode went out. Um, these things don't happen quickly on my channel, unfortunately. Uh, I have a daughter I have to look after. I do have a day job that I have to do obviously i've got my my family as well that you know lots has been going on so it's just one of those things you can, i can't always get stuff done every single day like some other people can but um i, I hope that you've enjoyed the, i hope you've enjoyed today's episode i really hope you've enjoyed the build and uh we look forward to another one and we can hear emily in the background having a little wind bless her she's teething at the moment so uh it is one of those things but yeah i don't know when i'll be back um obviously i don't know how long the next build's gonna take um i've got a few little bits and bobs that i need to touch up and finish up with this before i move on anyway but uh i will try my hardest to try and get an episode out at the end of next week or potentially midway through the following one um stuff will return a bit more to normal hopefully from next week with uploads um i didn't upload anything this week on the channel but hopefully from next week i'll be able to start adding a bit more on there again but um but yeah i'm basically gonna shut up now and i'm gonna let you enjoy the cinematics i'm gonna add a bit more than i usually would but enjoy the my friends i really hope you've enjoyed this build uh, but until next time uh, be sure to check out the description box below if you want to join the discord it's a really really good thing to come and join because we talk about this 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 project a lot over there and also uh, sharing things every single day um, subscribe to the channel if you are new that's really appreciated by me and it's the best way to support the channel and drop a like on this video so that more people can see it in the future but until next time my friends you make sure you stay safe you stay humble and i will see you next time.